this has just been touching the surface. I'm, I'm really feeling a little bit like I've bitten off more than I could chew here because I haven't been able to show you everything. <laughs> oh, wait, this is important. This is important. I started to show you how these guys self-organized. They fit together. They can obviously be clustered together to form these ball-shaped objects. By the way, this is interesting to mention, too. One of them looks like an apple. You see the stem? See the globe? The apple? The other one is kind of a flatted sphere. I call it a fig. Fig and apple. When one becomes self-aware, one puts on the fig leaf. The word fig in Hebrew is cognate to the word I am, the fruit of the tree, of the I am tree, the tree of self-awareness. Except if one attempts to line up the little decorations on the apple, they come out 2, 2, 2, an indistinct, unusable coordinate system. On the fig, 1, 2, 3. The fig generates, continues to propagate. The apple dies off. That, I believe, is why the apple is associated with evil, because it is a dead-end path, mathematically. After the bifurcation into these two forms, one dies off and the other continues to propagate. The living one is the fig shape. So it explains why apples have a bad name. By the way, you can consider uh, their vortex to be the serpent in the apple, if you like. The other thing that these things fit together to form, if one connects them in a long chain, is DNA. Tetra Buckminster Fuller's tetrahelix model of DNA. The interesting thing is that there are 22 faces to one module of DNA. The old Canaanite alphabet had 22 letters. There are 27 symmetry elements to the globular form. The new alphabet has 27 letters. The conversion between the old and new alphabet, which would have been unthinkable if the alphabets were different, is legitimate because the two alphabets excuse me, are transformations of each other. In fact, it may turn out that they correspond to the 27 lines on the general cubic surface and the 21 vertices and the center point. Maybe not, but it seems intriguing. Well, I've got some people who know a little more math than I am trying to help me figure that out, if that's legitimate. Let's see, maybe I should let people ask questions, because I, I really don't know how far I've gotten with this. I sort of got lost. And we could also turn this on and make it look pretty if we turn the lights out. Questions? What the application Well, the applications that, well, well the applications. The, <laughs> This is a self-organizing system. I didn't get to discuss it. There are applications potentially with, for self-organizing systems in, in artificial intelligence. Um, these geometric models are common to the various religious faiths that are at one time or another at war with each other. I think it would help people to respect each other if they realized that the models were common. Um, geometric metaphor is currently unrecognized in the Talmud. It's unrecognized in the Kabbalistic tradition. Most of the translators of Kabbalistic material take it to be just pure meditational directions or just poetry. They don't take seriously the descriptions. You plug these objects in and they make sense. For instance, in Sefer Yetzirah, they talk about a law of 3, 7, and 12, and they relate it to Tali, the dragon, Galgal, the wheel, and Labi, the heart. Well, the dragon is a line form, and it has three aspects to it. The wheel, Galgal, -gal, Gimel Lamed, Gimel Lamed, cognate to our letters CLCL, -CL, coil, coil, a double coil, a wheel of wheels. It's a seven object. And the heart, heart, down the middle. There's also a heart on, on this form, too, if you look through it. So the heart, shape, front to back, sits inside of a 12 symmetry object. So the fanciful description, 3, 7, and 12, a dragon, a wheel, and a heart, just poetry to the ordinary translation. If you plug in these models, it didn't make sense as a line, a surface, and a volume. OK, questions again. <laughs> gives rise to these forms, uh, some, at least one of which, uh, I guess the acrosahedron is one of the five platonic solids. And uh, well, I understood the five platonic solids, you start with the tetrahedron and... This is not a platonic solid, this is an Archimedean solid, it's a semi-regular. Yeah. Okay. 
It's, yeah. it's squares and triangular faces. But go ahead, continue. Well, there's a, the photonic solid that you draw the vortices out, they each give rise to the next one and generates the next one. Right. And the last one goes back to the seed form. And I was just wondering, are these two things parallel? Are they different from each other? Uh, the seed and the flower, you mean? Well, or, uh, the, the, uh, the acosahedron is... The generation you have here it doesn't include the dodecahedron. No, in fact, it, the dodecahedron is, is a kind of spin of, of five spheres, as five cubes. In other words, a dodecahedron can be thought of as, a, as five cubes that are sort of nested together. Okay. And uh, the first verse, in fact, that may be what's going to enable us to sort out those, those points that aren't covered yet, is that there's a, there's a denser packing. I just couldn't have drawn it that way, it would have been gibberish. So and that just represents a dodecahedron. It isn't, it isn't a dodecahedron the way I've drawn it. The acosahedron is the closest packing of 12 spheres without a central sphere. The cube octahedron has room for the central sphere. That's why it surrounds the lily on all sides. It surrounds it on the inside and outside. But that's where we started for the pages. The heavens and the earth, inside and outside. You talked about verse one folding up into that object, uh, uh -huh. nice symmetry. What about verse two? I didn't. I didn't know, uh, I have it in my notes here, it's just much too long. First two is, is lots more letters and makes a very big complicated pattern. But it, it doesn't fold up into that same pattern. It folds up in, well I can't be sure because it's too long to really twist it all down, but it folds up into a pattern that maps on this pattern. The word is there basically, instead of there being just se a seven turn, I believe there's 21 turns in eight fold symmetry. And, and I can show it to you afterwards. Also, like, this, is, this is the third verse. And again, you can see how the letters pair up. Um, I've looked at the first week, and it gets complicated very quickly. The elements of this pattern continue, but I can't show the pattern explicitly beyond the first few days. I've looked into the text, and I've found markers that indicate the patterns continue as far as about 2,000 letters in. Um, and then there's other statistical work that confirms that there are other patterns that permeate the text, which I, don't, I haven't done any work on that. But there's lots of uh, indications the patterns do continue. I've also correlated, I've, I've, there's a Hasidic rabbi staying with us in December, and he insisted that I check the last verse of Deuteronomy. And I said, what does that have to do with Genesis? And he said, well, there's a rabbinic teaching that the end of the Torah connects to the beginning of the Torah. So I said, all right, all right, I'll check. It correlates on the same form. Don't ask me how Deuteronomy was written, according to the scholars, a thousand years after Genesis. Yeah. I think you mentioned that a cube could also be used instead of the tetrahedron. Have you noticed any uh, specific advantages, like any specific instance where you'd want to use a cube rather than a tetrahedron? Uh, I'm using a tetrahedron because I believe that's the primary model. And because the symmetries of the tetrahedron are the same as the symmetries of a cube or an octahedron. And since it's the lowest order form, it's the one most likely to be the universally chosen one because it's the unique lowest order form. But in other cultures, in various cultures at various times, different ways of understanding this took priority. Um, the Hebrews may have used the ram's horn to model the shape of the vortex because it was a sacred object in their tradition. Um, Christians might have used the bell. It's also a vortex form. Uh, maybe we have a horn of this one. Maybe this is, you know, I mean, the, the, the Greeks seem to have used the double vortex in the form of an apple. By the way, this is the first form that functions as a donut. Remember, the quality of this donut is that it falls through itself. Well, if you try to make a tetrahedral, uh, a polyhedral frame fall through itself, you can't do it until you get up to the cube octahedron. The cube octahedron can pull through itself. See, this is a frame. This is a, the, the apple is the monad of wholeness. A donut is flat. It's a mathematically ideal because it's two, circ two circular cross sections. But it's not the lowest order form in the real world. In the real world, the one that has this embryonic quality of having a sphere surrounded by a sphere of spheres, which can fractally unfold like an unfurling wavefront endlessly, you need the cube octahedron. If one is uh, conscious enough to be a witness to themselves and observe themselves the way these objects are self-referential, how does the fact that that watching affects what is being watched change these objects? 